This one's been a long time coming. I'm sure if you notice if you watch the channel at all that I'm kind of into computers and woodworking. So it's time to put a computer in my shop. With all the builds I've done with wooden computers, I had to do something equally over the top for my shop. So I decided to go with a built-in cart with a TV lift and a drawer computer and a chair. This is gonna be a long one. I started by designing and sketch up all I would need so that I could make a detailed cut list. Projects like these just have too many parts to just wing it. I'll make these plans available on my website. They'll either be pre-sale or for sale on my website, or if you're a Patreon member, you can get them for free. Consider joining me on Patreon with any contribution, you get all the plans that I put on there for free. With my cutlass all done, it was time for the initial carcass assembly. I built this with dominoes along with pocket holes. You could build this with either by themselves, but I've been watching a lot of Mike Farrington videos lately and he's a way better cabinet builder than me, so I'll follow his lead. Even though I did a cutlass on this project, there were still a couple of little custom cuts that I had to do, like this cutout for the nested chair. So I was gonna have a chair so that I could do a sit or stand at the desk because I wanted the versatility to either like lock in and get some hard work done, or if I wanted to just like change the song on Spotify or whatever. This being the first time that I used my domino to do a carcass, I did figure out a few little tricks, like using a piece of offcut to offset your guide block, and also using the actual workpiece itself as a guide block, so you can quickly spin over and put the dominoes in the workpiece as well. So I had this little tiny connection where that one side panel of the carcass was gonna connect, and this provided the cutout so that the side of the nested chair could sit flush with the side of the cabinet. Again, more trickery with the domino to do the carcass of this cabinet. Here I'm installing the center divider. Now, I do have specific measurements for this in the plans, but it can be easier considering the error you might have to use the actual workpiece itself, again, to set the offset to install that center divider. That way there's plenty of room in this case for the back of the chair to nest into the cabinet. For the tray underneath where the keyboard tray was going to be, I just installed it with screws directly into the middle divider. I did that because I wanted to be able to perfectly square up those two edges so that I wouldn't have any trouble installing any of the drawers. After all the panels were installed, I installed the back panel just to square everything up and make sure everything was secure before I added any more pieces, especially the drawers. I also drilled out a hole in the back for a power cord so that I could eventually wire up all the electronics. The next step was to assemble the back and side of the chair that was gonna nest inside of the cabinet. Again, I used dominoes and pocket holes to assemble this along with glue, so it's very secure. This is basically gonna be three legs of the chair, which means that you can do something a little bit fun with the way the rest of the chair works out. It's only got one leg with a little platform and it's still perfectly stable. These two pieces of plywood come together to provide the three points of contact. Honestly, you could hang the seat just off of these two pieces of plywood. My initial design had a cantilever chair that swung out, but with my fat ass, it was gonna have to be a thousand pound cart and I wasn't all about that. So thanks to all you armchair physicists and engineers on Instagram for helping me to work out that math on that cantilevered platform. Yeah, it wasn't gonna work. The next step for this project was to laminate a couple of two by fours together to make all of the assembly for the seat and that additional leg. You could do this with four by fours as well, but if you do it with two by fours and you don't have a domino, you could easily replace all the domino joinery with a half lap joint and it'd be just as strong. I used my new Laguna 18 inch bandsaw to cut a taper onto this leg. This is purely decorative, so if you don't have a bandsaw, you don't have to add this feature, but it does take a little bit of the visual weight away from four x four legs. The base of the seat went together with uh, two dominoes per joint. It's plenty strong for what I need it to be. It was also gonna be screwed into the actual chair assembly itself, so no problem there. You could also replace this with just through screws or pocket screws and glue if that's what you needed. The total assembly is going to bear any of the weight, so you shouldn't be particularly concerned about any one joint. 
I may not have gotten my cantilevered chair, but at least I got one cantilevered corner. That should hold up against me even after Thanksgiving dinner. The top of the seat was gonna be made with three quarter inch plywood, and I was gonna use two layers of that to get an inch and a half of total thickness. The bottom layer, I just used some scrap cutoffs, screwed those in, and then I laminated the top piece so there would be no visible fasteners and nothing to catch your pants on. I made sure to clamp these two laminations together really well with a lot of weight and a bunch of clamps. That way the glue line wouldn't be as visible, especially with those pieces of scrap plywood underneath. I wanted to make sure it looked like a monolithic, like inch and a half piece of plywood. Even though I wanted this chair to have minimal clean lines, I added a couple of roundovers just for comfort. I rounded over the backrests and also the seat, just so that it wouldn't be digging into your back or into the back of your legs, but I still wanted to have those nice clean lines to flush up with the cabinet outside, so when it was nested, you couldn't really tell where it started and where it ended. And even though my laminations were pretty darn good, I used a belt sander to clean up the edges just to kind of homogenize everything. I don't know what you call it, but it looks nice and smooth now and looks like it's all one big piece of plywood. I also plugged in these screw holes and sanded that down. This whole back was gonna get a coat of white paint for a little bit of contrast, even though I didn't want it to sand out. I don't know. Okay, so the carcass is assembled, the chair is assembled, and now it's time for the easy part, I guess. For shop furniture, I like to use pocket holes for the drawers. That means I can just batch everything out real quick Throw, take it over to the foreman, drill some pocket holes, and it's ready to all go together with some glue and screws. Then I attach the bottom with glue and brad nails so that the whole thing can be brought together and squared up. These make really strong drawers that last a long time, and they only take probably like 10 minutes per drawer to assemble. Once all the drawers are assembled and the glue is dry, I take them on a router table just to flush everything up. That way they're nice and clean. And it's time to install some drawer slides. These drawers are gonna have three quarter inch plywood faces and there's not gonna be any face frame because it's shop furniture. So I made a little scrap cut off piece that had a three quarter inch plywood face that I could butt the front of the drawers against. And then I installed the drawer slides and installed all the drawers. I also installed one wide drawer without a face to use as a keyboard tray. More on that in just a minute. Now, just because this card is shop furniture doesn't mean it can't have anything fancy. I found a piece of Pure Bond walnut plywood laying around in my lumber room, and I decided to use that for some drawer faces. They were gonna look great from the edges. You know, this is nothing fancy, no dovetails or whatever, but at least when they're closed, they'll look nice. So it'll be a nice piece of set dressing for my shop, if nothing else. If you've watched my last couple of videos, you may have noticed that I've been a little bit weird with super glue. So I tried another little super glue technique for installing drawer faces. I put a couple little globules of the Starbond thick on the face of the drawer, and then I put accelerator onto the drawer frame itself. Then I could, you know, lightly temporarily attach it so I could then open the drawer and install it with screws from the back. Now, I am a member of Starbond's affiliate program, but that doesn't mean it isn't good stuff. If you wanna pick any up though, please use my link. It does help just a little bit. I'll drop that in the description down below. Now, back to that keyboard tray. This might be something you might find useful in other projects. I installed some locking Euro 105 degree frameless hinges. Hinges are so complicated sometimes, but I used those so that it could flip down to 105 degrees to make a comfortable wrist rest, but also lock close when it was effectively a drawer face. This worked out pretty well. It was a little more difficult for the layout of the actual hinges, but a couple little tweaks and I nailed it. It was no big deal. Oh, did I mention earlier in the video that there was gonna be a monitor lift in this? I only have a 27 inch monitor right now, but I use this 35 inch TV lift from tvliftcabinets.com so that I could get a full extension and kind of use this to effectively have a sit stand desk. I can have the monitor at any height and I can have a screen 
Well, in my cabinet up to 37 inches wide, but this lift will actually lift even a 60 inch TV 35 inches from wherever it's hidden within a piece of furniture. I use the TV lift with the lid attachment. That way I could use it as a flush writing surface or assembly area or just general use flat space in the shop whenever I'm not using it as a computer. At the moment, my shop takes up the entirety of this three car garage, but I did promise my wife that she could park here in the winter. So to go along with that, all of my shop furniture is now going on casters and this cabinet's not gonna be exempt from that rule. If you wanna see more about my three car garage workshop, you can see my shop tour in the previous video. I'll link to that in the card and down in the description. I don't know why I put so many elements into this little workshop cart, but it was kind of a passion project. I've been drawing and kind of developing it for a couple of months now in my head, but I decided to add a leather top. This is my first time working with leather, so I went to a local leather shop and asked them what the best way to laminate leather onto plywood would be, and they recommended the shoemaker's barge. It's kind of like rubber cement you've got to apply it to both sides and let it dry it's got huge open time i think you can let it dry up to five hours and still get a good tack and lamination the one trick is that once you put it on you've got to apply it with some pressure i think you've probably seen like shoemakers working around a form with a hammer and hammering it against the form so that it takes the shape same deal with this so i took a block of plywood and a nomar hammer and just hammered away until it was fully laminated and worked out all the bubbles. And then I let it dry for 24 hours before cutting it. I had a bunch of people on Instagram tell me that a 35 degree leather cutter was a useful tool. And I didn't really feel like buying too many tools. I probably won't do too much with leather. But another thing that I have that I ground at 35 degrees happens to be my Veritas marking knife, which is very, very sharp now and worked perfectly well for cutting the leather. Left a nice clean edge. I'm pretty sure that's most of the woodworking elements of this project, so it was time to sand it down and apply a little bit of finish. My favorite finish lately has been this Vermont Natural Coatings. I like because it doesn't have any VOCs and it's actually a byproduct of cheese. So there's no like crazy chemical smell. And being winter, I like to work with the door closed in the shop so I can just run my air filtration and just keep a door open and it's pretty good. I don't have to like operate in a field with a fan on me. If you want to try it out yourself, I've actually got a discount code working with them. So head over to vermontnaturalcoatings.com and use the code woodworklife1 for 10% off your first purchase. With the finish now applied, it was time to install the drawer hardware. I have used some of the commercially available drawer mounting jigs and they work great, but I do like to use just a couple sheet pieces of scrap and drill my own holes. That way I can be more versatile. I also like that this is two-sided. If you want more details about how I assemble this jig and how it works, I talk more about it in my video about making the walnut vanity. So I'll link that in the card here if you're interested in checking out more about that. But it works great and it costs like nothing. Oh, did you think I was done with all the elements of this build, huh? No, I've got a lot left to go. <laughs> this is going to be sporting a pretty hefty computer. It's running the AMD 3700X processor, which is an eight core third gen Ryzen processor, a special edition of their 5700X T GPU and some sexy gold RAM for, I don't know, shiggles. We'll see. It's pretty awesome. So I took out the bottom drawer and then I had to do some customization and layout around it so that I could install a computer and yeah, well, let's add another element, a water-cooled computer. Okay, cool. The last couple times that I've drilled out for a computer, I've actually done it by hand. This is the first time I've actually done it with a drill press and oh my God, it's so much easier. So I drilled out a couple holes for the pass through on the water cooling loop so I could attach the radiator to the back of this little cabinet. And then I also cut out a couple of holes for airflow and drilled out the screw holes so that I could pass through the screws and attach the radiator onto the back of the drawer. Yeah,
Another question I've surprisingly got a lot is asking how I drill out for the motherboard standoffs. Honestly, I just use the motherboard and mark it out with a long marker. You can also just print off a one-to-one -one copy of a motherboard ATX layout, and that works fine too. With the motherboard standoffs and all of the cutouts for the cable management already drilled in this little platform that was going to sit on top of a sort of lower cubby for all of the wiring and stuff, I assembled all the components and attached the water cooling pieces. Fun fact, that CPU water block was actually salvaged from Slab Ripper, if you want to check out that video. And I attached the motherboard and everything to the platform. I have done some hard tube builds in the past, so if you're into that, you can check out some of my other videos. But since this was gonna be hidden away in a drawer and I wanted to be able to pull it in and out if I ever need to do any maintenance, I use soft tubing for this. And I've got a bunch of extra slack down below. That way I can pull the motherboard tray out without affecting any of the water cooling components. And, oops. Okay, well, that's gonna be a problem. Fortunately, nothing was actually damaged with this little leak. What had happened is the screw had punctured one of the little micro channels within the fins of the radiator. So I patched that with a little bit of secret sauce, we'll say. There's not really a right way to do it, but it should be fine. And the system's all up and running, nothing was damaged. So I plugged in the power supply and installed that bottom drawer finally once and for all and forever and the computer's all in there. What's pretty cool is that the radiator actually vents all its hot air into the inside of the cabinet and all it draws in is air from the cabinet. So hopefully we'll see it should keep the sawdust at bay. And there it is, all done. Now, isn't that just something special? Ha, I love it. I guess it's all ready to rock and roll for uh, watching YouTube videos. I mean, 3D modeling, yeah, lots of 3D modeling that's coming. And when I get tired, I can just pull out the little chair and work right at the desk. Hopefully I can do some editing in my shop now. That might be nice. Well, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more computer build videos like this, be sure you subscribe. I like to do these every now and again. I've also got two more I'm going to throw here in the recommended cards at the end of the video. Again, I'm Rick with Woodwork Life. And remember to keep your tools sharp. And keep your mind sharper.